Hello. Well, I am holed up in my cottage in Dartmoor in reflective old England at the moment. I wonder where you are. A few people have asked me if I'd read a little bit from my new book, uh, Courting the Wild Twin, and I'm happy to do so. I am actually sitting at my desk at this very moment where I wrote the book. Not quite in one sitting, but there was um, an energy that burnt through it at the time that I uh, was grateful for. And it's odd because actually this moment is giving me the chance to read the book again. And I find there's things in there I don't remember that I wrote. It's as if the book is having a conversation with me ahead of time, ahead of this moment. So I'm glad for that. And so here's a bit from it. The wild twin is not unique to me. You have one, everyone has one. That's the message from the old stories. That the day you were born, a twin was thrown out of the window and sent into exile. That it wanders the woods and the prairies and the cities lonely in its whole body for you. It rooms in abandoned houses in South Chicago. Someone saw her once on a Dorset beach in winter. They are always asking after you. It lives in the feeling when the ruddy mud of the Nile squeezes between your toes. When moonlight slips from the mouth of a heron. When you play cards with a delightful villain. We all need to know a delightful villain. It's going to push you towards ruin on occasion. And it has a lot of generosity towards kids. It'll hide your laptop and it'll send a thousand wild geese processing over your tent on an October dusk. The wild twin is the vintner of the blood wine of your many private battles. It sells it in highly prized bottles to remote Armenian queens. It is incorrigible, melodramatic, and has only your best interests at heart. Know your twin and you'll become distracted by fiery angels languishing around the water cooler. You will beat your palms to drums no one else can hear, and subtle ideas will fly from you. At least that's what I hear. The wild twin doesn't fetishise surety. It doesn't embezzle guarantees or even really believe they exist. It hides chocolate in the pockets of your scruffy-haired nephews and it whispers forgiveness as it walks through the gardens we have neglected to tend. It hands us a spade. Walks through the gardens we have neglected to tend. Well, here is the perfect moment.